The in-space debut of the latest version of one of the most established rocket engines in history is now less than two years away. This week, Aerojet Rocketdyne announced plans to use the RL-10CX engine aboard the United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rockets starting in 2025. Jim Moss, the Vice President of Program Execution and Integration for Aerojet Rocketdyne, says the upgrades in these engines come from how they're made. The big change that comes from the CX is in the manufacturing part of our business. The de current design is heavily fabricated. You know, we, we buy 360 individual tubes that we form into the shape of the chamber and then we assemble those through a brazing and welding to create uh, a finished chamber. Now with 3D printing and the additive manufacturer design, we're converting our factory from being a fabrication house to very much a, a weld and machining house. The engine uses a large carbon silicone nozzle, which Moss says increases the specific impulse of the engine. That's a term used to describe the efficiency of a rocket engine. Adding more 3D printing techniques also allows them to use copper pieces in new ways, which further improves the engine design. Moving away from the stainless steel fabrication to the 3D printed copper, we're able to uh, now build geometries we couldn't have built otherwise with additive manufacturing, as, and then we're able to produce the engine now at the high volumes and the high rates that ULA needs. ULA is by far the biggest customer for these new engines. Back in 2018, the company tapped Aerojet Rocketdyne and its RL-10CX engine to power the upper stage for its upcoming Vulcan rocket. Then in April 2022, ULA placed an order for 116 RL-10CX engines to support its contract to fly more than three dozen missions for Amazon's Project Kuiper satellite internet constellation. We're working very closely with them on their design and they're testing. Once that's all completed, uh, we'll be looking forward to actually just integrating it onto our onto our, our, our Vulcan rocket. And then, of course, we'll be looking at all of our missions that are coming forward in terms of what those requirements are and, and making sure we can satisfy those requirements with this new engine. But before the RL-10CX engines debut in 2025, and seeing good uh, pre-start on the RL-10. ULA will continue to fly the RL-10C 1-1 engines on Vulcan's Centaur 5 upper stage. That engine has been flying since 2021. ULA is currently preparing for the first flight of Vulcan in late December. Several years back, ULA started providing to us the specifications for the pressures and temperatures and environment, the way that ULA was going to operate those engines. We compared that to the what, to what we had qualified the engine for, and then we've done analysis and testing to prove that the Vulcan conditions will be acceptable to the engine. Well, so far the integration has been going really great. We uh, got the booster erected, we put the Centaur 5 on top of the booster, and we're going to go out and do a wet dress rehearsal. We'll tank the rocket fully, and then we'll be ready to go for our launch on December 24th. The RL-10 rocket engine, power plant for the Centaur and Saturn, is the result of years of research and development. The legacy of this engine goes back to the 1950s and 60s. It was first engineered by Pratt & Whitney under the direction of the former Lewis Research Center, now known as NASA's John Glenn Research Center at Lewis Field. It had its first successful launch back on November 27, 1963. That was when an Atlas Centaur II rocket lifted off from Launch Complex 36 at Cape Canaveral. The engine went on to be used in space more than 520 times since then. These days... And Eco. One of the legacy versions of the engine, the RL-10B2. And we've had stage one, two separation. Currently is used to power the Delta cryogenic second stage of the Delta IV heavy rocket. Deployment of the nets. Just one more of these will launch before the rocket is retired. And now ignition on the RL-10 for the first burn. The RL-10B2 is also used by NASA to power the interim cryogenic propulsion stage of its Space Launch System rocket. The first of three was used on the Artemis 1 mission in November 2022. Two more will power the ICPSs for the Artemis 2 and 3 missions. Four RL-10 engines will power future Artemis missions once they start flying the exploration upper stage for the SLS, beginning with the Artemis 4 mission. That said, according to Aerojet Rocketdyne, NASA hasn't made a determination on whether they will order the newer RL-10CX engines or go with a legacy model. Aerojet Rocketdyne is not only launching humans via the Artemis program, 
but also through the commercial crew program. We have Beco booster engine cutoff. For the Centaur 3 upper stage of the Atlas V rockets. And we have indication of a successful stage separation event. Restart on the RL-10s. You know, we've been bringing astronauts down to West Palm Beach to our facility to talk to our team about the reality of what we deliver. And it's very motivating for us to see our passengers standing in front of the room telling us about how much they're relying upon us. But the reality is we design and build a highly reliable product and it's demonstrated its reliability. With dozens of launch orders in hand, Aerojet Rocketdyne hopes the RL-10 engine will continue to be used for at least another 60 years yet to come. Reporting from Cape Canaveral, Will Robinson-Smith for Spaceflight Now.